Hello, my name's Peter Wren from the I Wanna Believe channel and welcome to Paranormal Encounters. Get ready to journey into the mysterious and unsettling world of the paranormal. In this gripping show, Paranormal Encounters, we delve into the lives of those who have come face to face with the unexplained. Through candid and heartfelt conversations, we bring you the graphic, personal and emotional stories of paranormal witnesses, revealing the chilling realities that lie beyond the veil. Well, my name's Todd. I'm uh, an Ottawa, Ontario native, currently residing in the Vancouver area. Very, very happy transport, just from a few things that occurred. But uh, yeah, I'm just here basically because of uh, some things that transpired in my grandparents' house. Started off fairly simple, you know, it was a fairly happy childhood for the most time, but uh, Every once in a while, it seemed like there was something else there that would just appear, kick up. Every once in a while, you know, it would be a little touch of something. I mean, usually it was okay, but uh, as I was saying, sometimes gravity just seemed to work in a mysterious way. And I mean, I had one of those normal childhoods, you know, played lawn darts in the backyard until they got banned, outlawed, and whatnot. I went swimming down over at the nearby beach when I was four years old was the probably the first time. And there I was just playing in the dining room. I had something touch my left shoulder. I remember looking up expecting to see somebody because it felt like a cold, like a cold male hand or a, like a cold adult hand on my shoulder. Looked up, there was absolutely nobody there. I looked down and all of a sudden I'm seeing this apparition like thing. And my eyes are going up and up, following the arm that's attached to the hand. And my head is at exactly the same angle as I started off when I couldn't see anything. So I ended up darting out of the house and ended up over at the, the next beach. And that, uh, that kind of thing just steadily, progressively continued and got worse until I was six. And that was probably about the first time when I encountered what I'd call one of those shadow figure like things. And I, I, that, those are a bit strange to me, but, uh, and they were, the shadows were basically what would change the ambient temperature. And every once in a while, I swear it would make me a little sick, you know, like flus and just the doctors couldn't find anything, but, I was fairly seriously ill for a while. Man. I believe it was a man. It may very well have been one that was buried in the backyard. I remember when I was six, I was doing some gardening, and I ended up digging up a human femur. So. What? Sorry. Yeah, it was uh, it was it was a bit of a more than a bit of a shock to me at the time yeah. too, and yeah, it was one of those things I actually had to verify in um, an old copy of Gray's Anatomy because I, I did not want to believe that uh, I was seeing what I was seeing. And... So what did what did they call the police? Oh heck, no, no! It was a very very old established neighborhood, and it was probably just somebody who got. Uh, Somebody who couldn't be buried in the cemetery, but needed to be buried somewhere. What? But that was that was one of the locations that were uh, things like random footprints would appear in the grass, like there'd be nobody there, but you could see these foot indentations of boot prints in the grass. I mean, it didn't necessarily need to talk to convey a sense of intelligence. I mean, sometimes just the way things would move would indicate something it wasn't just like a random whatever it's like something was out of place and it would get moved to where it should have been it was it's it's really hard to explain when things are happening around you especially when your emotional like your emotions can suddenly change in like an absolute instant 
and for no real apparent reason. So, I mean, there had to be some sort of, oh, some sort of intellect behind whatever it was. Uh, the person that helped confirm for me that I wasn't crazy was my grandmother, and she was one that experienced a few things as well with me at the same time. We had uh, an old sewing machine that, that, that wasn't electrified, but she had it set up upstairs and it gave a full rotation and full view of her and I. And she always just said that it was her sister, my great aunt. So, Oh, the history of the house is, well, nobody really knew exactly when it was built. The neighborhood was established in 1820 originally by one Captain John Le Breton. We suspect that the house was built around the same time that the original railroad was put in around 1870. But again, we have no, there was no official record to be uh, found available from the house at the time we were searching. Sometimes I, I've been, I was scratched in the house, kicked in the house, oh shoot, sometimes just in the neighborhood, but uh, the neighborhood was kind of scattered with a few unusual relics, some unusual ruins. Like the uh, right at the beach, we had the steamship wreck of the Anne Sisson, which at one point in time was used to transport the, I think it was uh, Prince Edward the Seventh, on his trip through Canada. That was the ship that he used before transferring to rail, and it's actually suspected that uh, he might have transferred bird from ship to rail in the Britannia neighborhood as well. But uh, a lot of things haven't been able to be confirmed on that one. My name is Linda Carino, and I've been in the paranormal field for over 40 years. And um, I have to say that Todd's case was definitely intriguing. And one of the reasons that I found that it was so intriguing was that um, he he kept saying that things happened a lot and most people can remember one or two little things but in my mind it seemed as though he remembered them but he didn't want to remember them there were so many there were too many uh to even mention now he said that the first time that anything happened to him was when he was four years old and that something touched him on his left shoulder while he was playing in the dining room this was at his grandparents house there was um some kind of an apparition that he saw and he ended up just darting out of the house and when he was asked about, you know, what it was. He mentioned that, oh, well, you know, when he was six years old, he dug up something in the backyard that happened to be a bone, a human femur, which I thought was very interesting. Um, and it, honestly, sometimes hauntings do begin when things like this happen. You know, inadvertently, you're digging up a garden in your backyard, and then all of a sudden, you are disturbing a resting place of some kind. So was this particular apparition attached to the bones that were found in the backyard? We'll never know. But there is a possibility that perhaps something did get displaced that could have interrupted the energetic flow of the area that might have been an attractant uh, and it could have summoned this presence there was this presence you know there because it was buried in the backyard we don't know but it was very interesting um, the experiences continued on and when he was six years old um, he experienced what he described as shadows and these shadows changed the ambient temperature and he would get sick. So he had a lot of flus and at one point he was seriously ill. Interestingly enough, people who have activity sometimes explain it away or they'll say, well, you know, it, it, I had activity, but it was always cold and we just figured it out, you know, it was just cold in the house. When he talks about the shadows changing the ambient temperature, a lot of times people talk about cold spots. Cold spots usually are indicative of some kind of activity because 
whatever is in the home is energy and energy feeds off of energy. So it will sometimes make things cold because it feeds off the ambient heat in the room. So um, you could experience cold spots. He obviously did. And he, he kind of um, linked it to these shadows. So I thought that was interesting. He also claimed that he was sick, seriously ill, often because you're talking about energy and spirits and entities can affect the energetic field in, in a home. They can definitely influence the atmosphere and they can make the atmosphere low in some way, vibrationally. And you may experience different moods, you may experience sickness, you may experience um, asthma, you may experience all kinds of health issues. So it's not surprising that he would feel low and depleted in energy and would be able to get sick. Um, he talked about seeing random footprints in the grass on the property. He believes that whatever it is was intelligent, that it would move things to where things should be, which is interesting. When you talk about um, seeing random footprints or things being moved, sometimes we're talking about an intelligent spirit. He claims that yes, it was active and intelligent because it was able to, to do things like move things um, into the right location. Um, he did say that um, his emotions changed in an instant. And obviously this happened for a very long period of time. Again, they can influence the atmosphere in a location so that your emotions can change. One minute you're happy, one minute you're sad, one minute you're depressed, the next minute you're elated. That can certainly happen. Um, his grandmother experienced an old sewing machine uh, and he was with her at the time. They saw it full rotation, full view. Um, you know, that those old Singer sewing machines, they're not electric, but they do move if you're moving the pedal. So obviously, if it went up and down, something was moving it. So something was able to interact with whatever it was in that location. So again, her grandmother said it was her great aunt. It was it was his great aunt. It was her sister. So she had an explanation for it. Could have been her sister. You never know. Um, but obviously, his grandmother did believe that there was something that was able to interact um, spiritually with them, which I thought was interesting. Um, he did say that there were no official records found at the time. The neighborhood dated back to the 1800s, um, but that there was something negative there and something negative in the home. He said he was scratched and kicked on multiple occasions, that it was an unusual neighborhood. There were unusual ruins in the neighborhood. There was a shipwreck. Um, there, there were all kinds of traumatizing things that happened to him. He didn't go into a lot of detail about what the traumatizing situations were, um, but I can imagine having lived in an environment that was so um, obviously active, it would have been very traumatic. And if he was seeing things and experiencing things all the time, um, then obviously um, this he would he might do things that were out of character and it would really influence him and stick around for a very, very long time. He did say that um, eventually the house was sold, everybody moved, and then it did stay with him, but that after a cleansing ritual that an elder um, gave him to do, that things were better. And, um, you know, every once in a while, he would see a specter or two, but um, that he was able to piece things together eventually. And it helped when he could verify that things were happening or that did happen um, with research and documents. And, you know, validation does help because when you can't explain what's going on, it, they can be very traumatizing. But validation does help. And that's where um, I can certainly say that if you reach out to a paranormal investigator or uh, someone who can help you to put the pieces together, 
it is a very cleansing and a very rewarding experience because uh, the validation does make you realize that no, um, these things did happen. You're not crazy. These are the reasons perhaps why they were happening. And, um, you know, it, it makes you understand that, um, you know, if you acknowledge it, but you hide it, then whatever it is has power over you. But if you bring it to the fore and you talk about it and you shed light on it, again, if you name it, then it doesn't have as much power over you. And eventually you're able to let it go and it will dissipate. And then your life can perhaps get back to more normal or to normalcy. So um, thank you so much, Todd, for sharing your story and um, for, you know, just, just being who you are.